The Scammon County Child Care Committee, in collaboration with Longford County Child Care Committee, are delighted to bring you this podcast where Irene from the Scammon County Child Care Committee will discuss research which she con conducted in County Roscommon with Early Childhood Care and Educational Services. The title of the research is Pedagogical Leadership in Early Childhood Care and Education and Governance and Practice. So you're all very welcome and um, we're delighted to have you all here. Part of today um, is going to look at research that I undertook, as Magella said, as part of my Masters in Queen's University. And the research was based in County Roscommon with our practitioners in County Roscommon. And I want to thank the services in County Roscommon for undertaking that research with me. And I think it's a really important piece of research because it is on leadership, governance and practice and services. So the first thing is leaders, if you want one year of prosperity, grow grain. If you want 10 years of prosperity, grow forests. And if you want 100 years of prosperity, what do we do? We grow leaders. So we're saying out of today, we're in this room, we're all leaders. That's what we need to go away with. So the research, as I said, was carried out in County Roscommon with the services. Uh, we, part of the research, we looked at the leadership theories, the summary of findings from the empirical research that I did on the leadership theories, the leadership versus management, and we'll go into that in a minute. People get confused about leadership versus management and which is it. The leader traits and skills, leader power and influence, the importance of leadership uh, for our organizational effectiveness, and leadership theories in relation to early childhood care and education. We also, uh, as I said, looked at the role of leaders versus managers. So we looked at recent policy developments in the ECC sector, uh, which has been huge over the last five years, as you all know. Um, the leadership models that would influence the early years sector, the changing landscape of early childhood care and education in Ireland as it is today, the national child care programmes and our national quality frameworks were all involved in this research. And the research recognised the complexity of the leadership role of yourselves, using the experiences of the practitioners to reflect on how they felt their leadership was enacted in their services. So the study made a number of recommendations, including the promotion of a theoretical understanding of leadership in the early years, the inclusion of leadership responsibility in job descriptions. Part of the research was that the practitioners gave me their job descriptions. And when I looked at them, really they weren't up to date, right? And I, I see a lot of you nodding the heads in the room there. So, I, as part of the research, I drafted new job descriptions for the sector for County Roscommon. And in there, we put in everything that you do, because you're, you do a lot of stuff from child protection, health and safety, development of the child, support and supervision, and none of that was evident in your job descriptions. You probably got them years ago, and they might have never been updated. We also looked at support for continuing professional development and the development of leaders um, so that ye can be leaders who can be diverse and active agents of change. So you're the ones that are going to be the change within the sector. We looked at models that will work across ECCE services and share the future development of leadership practices. The theories I looked at then were the trait theory, the behavioral style theory, situational leadership model theory, Fielder's con contingency model, the transformational leadership model, autocratic, democratic, and laser fair model. So they're all models of leadership that we looked at as part of this research. And then we looked at two functional leadership models, Adair and Cruz and Posner's. And they were all very interesting, I have to say, when I looked at them and researched them. So Adair's action leadership model is a three-center action leadership model that looks at the task, the job that needs to be done, if you see there in one of the circles. The individual, that's yourselves, the individuals who make up the team and what makes up the team within a service, your motivations, your personalities and your skills. And then the, um, the individuals themselves then and the group of people that the leader is responsible for. Coos and Pausner's five practices of exemplary leadership model then looked at focusing on the leaders and what they do and their functions. And it demonstrated that the leaders can learn the most appropriate behaviours through training and development. However, what the research did show up was that was assuming that all leaders can adopt their behaviour or adapt their behaviour. And we all know that some of us um, have worked with people that have narrowed beliefs and persistent old habits do persist. So really, that model cannot change people like that. 
So just because the model improves staff practice, it doesn't necessarily mean that it improves outcomes for children. So what was the model looking like? It looks like modeling the way for, for, for other uh, practitioners in our services, clarifying our values, setting the example within the service, inspiring a shared vision, enlisting the help of others that we're not on our own, challenging the process, searching for opportunities, experiment, and a leader should be able to take risks. That's what leadership is all about. Enabling others to act then, fostering collaboration, strengthening others, building a team around you, encouraging the heart, recognizing contributions of everybody within the team, and celebrating the small victories that you have in your services. So the shared leadership model that I looked at was schoolers, and it's a four-dimensional process. It means not having to rely on any one person. There's a formal leader, but that formal leader does not always need to lead from the front. So it might mean that the leader is not the person that you end up delegating something to do. So say for instance today, we had this conference, but just because Roscommon and Longford were the lead on it didn't mean that we did everything today. We delegated it out to other people and we got the tasks uh, to other people that were better at certain things than we were. So that's what this model is all about. Personal leadership then is a power and akin to dropping a pedal in a pond at saying. So say for instance, um, in your service, you make one small change and you can look at the ripples that that, you, you see that yourselves, can't you, in staff teams sometimes, you can look at the ripples that that creates itself. The distributed leadership model in Harris is engaging expertise within the organization rather than seeking leadership from the formal position or role. It reduces the workload of the leader, but this one is not to be confused with delegation. It concentrates on engaging expertise wherever it exists within our organizations, rather than seeking it from the manager or the supervisor, whoever that is. So you seek out the best person within your team. Again, when we're looking at a distributed leadership model, there was three areas that we felt must be considered. We needed to learn from the past difficulties. We needed to look at the diversity of our organizations, the stu structures and the governance, the variety of programs we, we develop, the employment of staff who may have different educational backgrounds. All of that has to be considered when looking at a distributed leadership model. Distributed leadership is not based on one person then, but it's based on the interactions of diverse stakeholders, structures and situations we find ourselves in. So system leadership then is promoting self-improvement within the early years sector and challenging each other to drive that improvement. What are the three ways in which system leadership can improve or can operate? It means that leaders working across the centres share and jointly develop their practice. So in Roscommon and Longford and all the counties you've come from today, I'm sure you network yourselves among services. And you may have your peers or your mentors that you call you know, for advice or maybe just to run something by. That's what system leadership is about. Leaders reaching out beyond their own centres to lead work with other early year settings, such as full daycares, childminders, and schools, so that we can have coherence in the provision across the sector. The third one then under system leadership would be that as leaders, we would influence change in the sector, including how services for children and families are shaped and developed by articulating and drawing on our own experiences, on your experiences as practitioners. So what's the challenge with this model? When I looked at it and researched it, the biggest challenge was that we needed to look at the bigger picture in securing best outcomes for children and families. And by doing this, it was a challenge because we also had to keep the quality of our own services up to standard. So this is a difficult uh, uh, leadership model to work with on both of those sides. So when we looked at the research, we asked the practitioners, how do you see leadership? How does it happen every day in your service? So the research investigated how a range of personnel, including the managers, the leaders, the voluntary management committee members, and the support agencies like the County Child Care Committee, like the Pobble, like the DCYA, supported and understood and enacted leadership. Data was gathered from questionnaires. I did a day in the life vignette of some of the practitioners. That was really interesting. So what we developed as part of the research was that a practitioner would from nine o'clock in the morning to five o'clock in the day 
every hour, every half hour document what they were doing. And it was amazing. The different facets to your working day was just amazing. One minute you were helping with the children on the ground, the next thing, minute you were um, seeing to some HR problem, or you were dealing with an agency, or you were sending off a form to public or the department. So your roles as leaders are very diverse. Okay. So the overview of the role of leadership was devised from these vignettes and it looked at the, the particular job and activities that you had every day. We looked at the leadership and the skills that you were aware of and we asked you to think of things that you would do or how you were doing that and the supports that was helping you to do that. We asked you to reflect on it and, and give additional comments. So that was very interesting for the practitioners that took part in that. The research recognized the complexity of leadership roles using the experiences of leaders in the sector and it reflected on how the leadership was enacted. And the one thing that came out through the uh, research that I did was the breadth of experience from the practitioners themselves was amazing. It was huge. And we must never forget that as agencies. You're the experts, not us. We must never forget that. The contribution then of the early years educators, the parents and the community activists has been a powerful force in promoting children's learning. So it's not just down to us as practitioners within the service, it's around the wider community, the local public health nurse, the solicitor that we might get on our committee, management committee, all the other community activists that may help us to develop positive outcomes for children. So the recommendations then that came out of the research was there was nine recommendations, there was one educational leadership promotion of a theoretical understanding of leadership in the early years. And what that means is that a lot of the VTEC and, and degree courses don't really go into depth about the theories of leadership. And as a researcher, I feel this needs to happen. The research also made a recommendation that we should be appointing an educational leader within each setting. And what that means was that we would appoint somebody in the setting that would act as a diverse uh, a change of management and an advocate for children's rights within the service and that they would lead the educational contact with the content within the service so they would lead on the curriculum and, and the planning they should guide other educators in their planning and reflection and they should mentor the colleagues in their implementation practices the second recommendation was about continuing professional development and we're all saying that, or we on the ground, that we need more continuing professional development for the sector. So we need models uh, to support our practices in leadership and we need a national rollout of a quality on-site training program to include leadership. And we needed to include programs like AISH to SHIELD to the preschool regulations, um, the national guidelines on the protection for welfare and children and now our practice guidelines. The third recommendation was to support leadership training through accredited courses. And again, we needed to assimilate leadership theories and competencies into all our accredited training programs to support the development of pedagogy, child development, and policy developments in leadership. The fourth one was, can, again, was the number of CDP days. As you all know, you're here today, it's a Saturday. I bet a lot of you aren't going to get the time back. That's not right. We need to be advocating, and we are on a national level. I don't know if there's anybody listening to us, but we keep saying it. We need to have those CDP days. We need to be recognized for the profession that we're in. So that was one of the recommendations. And what I'm saying is that criteria, there should be a fund for this, a national fund for this, and criteria should be drawn up uh, to access such a funding scheme with clear CDP pathways uh, for successful applicants. I'm not talking about the Learner Fund, I'm talking about continuing professional development days with clear pathways. The fifth recommendation was to develop a national database of the EC workforce, um, and we're saying that every county through their county child care committee could do this, and we would have a national database that would inform funders of the gaps then in the training, okay? We would include ourselves as support agencies as that, in that as well, because remember, we need ongoing professional development as well as the services on the ground. The sixth recommendation then was about voluntary management committee leadership. And again, we said that the voluntary management committees for community services needed this and they needed a funding program to support their own development. They also needed administrative support. 
because again, there's an awful lot of paperwork now for services with all of the, the programs and the funding schemes. And they also needed uh, CDP hours for themselves. The seventh recommendation was then around consultation with the sector. So we're saying it should continue to capture your expertise, your training and your support needs. We should recognize the level of voluntary activity. And when I looked at it in terms of County Roscommon, and I'm sure it's the same in every other county, I found it really hard to captivate the um, economic contribution that voluntary management people on committees gave to services. And if we captured that nationally, I think it would, it would really surprise us. So I wanted to look at that in terms of this, but it was too broad for this research. The eighth recommendation was about promoting both male and female participation. And looking around the room, I don't think we have any male in the room, do we, except the lads that are <laughs> filming. Thank you very much for putting your hand up. Um, it's predominantly a female, a female sector, isn't it? But we need more males in there. We need more role models, uh, male role models. So one of the things that this research is saying um, that I did was that maybe the way we need to do it is through the transition programs. That maybe that could be encouraged through the transition program that the ECC services, yourselves, the Men and Child Care Network, the local county committees, um, and local training and education boards should come together and look at that and see if, would, that be, would that be a runner. The ninth recommendation again was about the job descriptions and we're saying it needed to re reflect your current leadership <coughs> responsibilities, which some of them are not doing. So leadership should not be seen as an area for the most senior management uh, of the team, uh, but should be encouraged throughout the organizations. So if you go away with anything today, what we're saying, all of us will be saying throughout the day to you, leadership is everyone's responsibility. It's not just the supervisor in the room, it's not just the manager, it's the bus driver, the cook, the cleaner. They could come across a child throughout their day, they may say something or do something that would uh, have a, have a knock-on effect for that child and the outcomes for that child. So we should be saying in a service, everybody is a leader. Everybody should be able to develop their own leadership style, be an advocate for best practice in ECCE services, as well as being an advocate for best outcomes for children. We should have mentoring, training, coaching, and supervision in our job descriptions, and we should have responsibilities in there in our job descriptions in relation to child protection. What was the role of the adult then in terms of leadership? How do we show leadership? When trying to elucidate the complexity of leadership, it was a daunting task. It really was, and it continues to engage researchers such as myself looking at it. As we continue to define and, and revise and look at what ECC is, it's vital we're saying that we strive for a better understanding of leadership and to look at ways to nurture leaders for the future. We're saying that leaders in today's ever-changing global world need to be adaptable. So we need to be adaptable and flexible. Leadership is not clearly defined, the research said, and I found that no theory or model covers all aspects of leadership. We can pick bits from each model. Organizations need both managers and leaders to be successful, and if both are effective, the organizational uh, aspect of any service will have a better chance of achieving its goals. Leaders were well able, in this research in Contrary Common, let me tell you, the leaders were well able to articulate how their style of leadership was enacted while acknowledging the current climate that you're in. So the conclusion for the research was that the importance of leadership within the early years cannot be underestimated because of evidence-based literature that links early childhood experiences with success in later life. We all know that. Leaders need to work at our own style. And the transition we found through this research for early years educators into a leadership role can be quite challenging. It really can be quite challenging. The research highlighted the need to pay close, close attention to, to the curriculum and the pedagogy and the importance of having a designated educational leader in this area with a strong vision to guide pedagogical decisions. They should have a, sta a shared understanding of how to approach working with young children and how to achieve best outcomes for them. The, CCs, uh, the ECC services which are effective then embrace external support. They are advocates for young children and they have local community involvement, and they work in partnership with all the agencies. And the research acknowledges the potential of parents and community activists 
and being a powerful force in promoting all children's learning. Those working and volunteering in the VC sector make an enormous commitment to the profession. We are all keen to improve our levels of professionalism and we want to continue to implement our national programs. But we also found through this research, one of the things we wanted and the practitioners wanted, we wanted a chance to be able to shape policy. That's what we found. We wanted to have that chance to shape future direction for the sector. Sustained and coordinated leadership is needed from government then because we can't do this without government funding or without government initiatives to continue to lead uh, and develop leadership within the sector. So I'm just going to show you this slide quickly. I'm not going to go through it. But if you think of all the influences that it, it would have on a child throughout your day working within the services, there's loads of different influences there, from teachers to preschool to working together local educational policies, social values, their ideologies, their culture, lots of different things. And you think you're in the mix there as well. So you have a huge influence on children. So a leadership or manager, a leader, are you a leader or a manager? What would you think you are yourselves? I'm not going to ask you to answer me. But this research looked at that, whether they were leaders or managers. We asked that question. So just as a quote here, I want to say to you, leadership is more about change, inspiration, setting the purpose and direction, and building the enthusiasm, unity, and staying power for the journey ahead. Management then, the difference with leadership and management, management is less about change and more about stability and making the best use of resources to get things done. But guess what? There's a key point here. Leadership and management are not separate and they should never be separate. And they are not necessarily done by different people. It's not the case of either you're a leader or a management. Leadership and management overlap. In every day when we're leading and managing a team, it overlaps. This just slide, just to, to kind of bring it all together. Leaders become great, not because of their power, but because of their ability to empower others. So again, we're saying we don't always have to be the leader. We can delegate so others can get that role as well. So there are just a few references. I, if, you, if you want to have further information on the research, you can contact me. But I'm just glad to get the opportunity to present the research and thank the services in Contra Scotland for participating. Thank you very much.